all this is Dr. Mubin Sayed in the cafe and I saw Paul Bork's question and I saw Doug's question that why 80 milligrams? So I'll, I will talk about that in a second. Paul Bork said, um, hello again, Doug Gross, any quick additional summary of the zinc for prostate teaching? And Doug had a very good answer and that is prevents hyperplasia via apoptosis. That is the normal level. So low zinc levels, so Doug, thank you very much. Low zinc levels do two main issues, create two main issues. Number one, less zinc, more cells, because zinc, zinc helps with apoptosis. So that's one that you're seeing on the screen by Doug. Second issue is that less zinc means more Krebs cycle, because citrate is now converting to isocitrate and we are making more energy, because zinc is not present to inhibit aconitase enzyme. The result is lots of energy production, which will cause lots of growth of the cell, which would also cause hyperplasia. Now, they both together in the long run can become cancerous as well. So zinc's reduction or less levels can do that. And the important thing is zinc levels, even if you want it or not, starts becoming less because of the various factors that I discussed before. So after 40, it is important for the, for the folks to keep an eye on zinc, especially men. I think during the pandemic, many of us were taking zinc and quercetin, so that may have helped, but we should all check our zinc levels and make sure that the zinc levels are correct. Now, going to the second part, Doug had asked this question in the last talk, that what about the 80 milligram, where did that come from? So let me show that. <laughs> Alexander says, crap cycle could be another name for long COVID. Yeah. So that's actually correct. So let's look at the, hold on. I have to go to the appropriate here. So Doug, in this study, this is a 2005 study. Then they did an updated study of this as well. This study is the, um, it is called ARDS, Age-Related Eye Disease Studies. This is ARDS 1 or ARDS 1. And there is another more latest one, ARDS 2. But here in this study, they talked about, there are studies that show, so let me see if I can. Here, only 10 of 2,127 patients diagnosed as having prostate cancer during the study, the study that they're discussing, had advanced cancer and a zinc intake of greater than 100 milligram per day. In sum, the health professional's data suggest that high levels of supplemental zinc may contribute to prostate cancer promotion in a small minority of patients. So they say because of that, that there is a study that shows in a very small minority of patients, 100 milligram or above may be associated with higher prostate cancer levels. Because of that, they said in our study, we used 80 milligram per day and lower levels, and that had no problem in terms of prostatic damage. And so they said, we recommend 80 milligram per day. Now, what is this dose? This dose is important for people, again, in the advanced age, for protecting their eyesight or the macula, the part of the eye that degenerates and we start going blind. So for macular protection, zinc is one of the components. So if you said, what are the other components? I have these links in the description. So here is another, so ARDS2. In this one, here are the components that they suggested. Vitamin C, E, copper, zinc, beta carotene, lutein, and zixanthin. And they also talk about this, that some of these are actually known to cause other issues. So one has to sit down with the doctor and say, what should I do? What are the drugs I'm taking? What are the supplements? What are my 
comorbidities. But if you see here, in here, zinc, 80 milligram. <laughs> Doug says armed. So ARDS. <laughs> All right. So that is that. Meanwhile in America says, be careful with the probiotics. It flared my MCAS out of control after just three doses. Some people's MCAS actually flares up with uh, dairy products. So this is a very good question. Nipa says, why some can't tolerate zinc feels pukish? My daughter, any specific uh, benefit for women? So first of all, uh, they can change the type of food they're taking for zinc or the type of um, a supplement they're taking. If it still causes this, it is probably irritating them because it's a metal. So you can combine it for something else or maybe take more foods instead of the supplements. So that is one. Secondly, for the women, now, this zinc level reduction actually occurs in women and men. It's just that men have a prostatic, uh, you're a doctor, you know it. Men have the prostate cells that men have prostate, and then those cells are zinc accumulating cells. And you see how important the function of zinc is in there. Uh, women do not have zinc accumulating cells. So normal deficiency of zinc and its effects, for example, effects on the eyes or, or effect on the normal cell's health or effect on energy production, effect on mitochondrial health, effect on apoptosis and renewal of cells, immune system effects. Zinc is also actually related to nuclear factor kappa B uh, cycle as well. All those are common in men and women. But prostatic hyperplasia and the cancer is, of course, a bigger bothersome thing for men and of course for men. So that means it's actually important for both, but um, men have more rigorous outcomes because of its deficiency. <laughs> Linda says, I have no prostatic problems, but then I have no prostate. Yep, so lucky you. And at the same time, as I said, zinc deficiency can cause issues with all. So um, Skyfrog says, is zinc gluconate not a good supplement? It is fine. They, if you read this article, they actually discuss this in detail, various uh, supplements and their types. And they discuss this in, in here that many of the zinc preparations are prone to become impacted in their absorption if the zinc absorption system isn't working correctly or if there are drugs that are affecting the zinc transporters. On the other hand, when zinc amino acids are taken, then zinc can enter a cell through amino acid channels instead of using the zinc channel. So if there's a drug that is impacting the zinc door, zinc can go through the window with amino acids. That is the benefit of using amino acids. So that means if somebody does not have an impact on the zinc transporters, for example, they're not taking some medicines or they, they do not have, let's say, GIT issues, then zinc in whatever form will be fine. But a preferable form which provides better availability in prostate, zinc amino acids. Okay, so <clears throat> Carlos says, Hi, doctor. Say an immunity naive, immune naive person takes single shot of original strain vaccine and second shot is Omicron specific. Would it lead to good immunity for both? Yes. Yes. It should. So, Colombian coffee bean says, does zinc taken with quercetin have the same effect as amino acid chelated zinc? So quercetin also acts as a uh, zinc transporter. So yes, it is like giving amino acids. <laughs> Bob says, 
if I had prostate problems, I probably wouldn't admit it to my doctors because she might want me to get one of those awful prostate biopsies. They can uh, actually, without biopsies, they can one, they can do per rectal examination to feel the prostate and then they can look at the prostate uh, enzymes as well. And from there, they can get a lot of information. So not necessary to have the biopsy. Correct. Yeah, so zinc has lots of functions. This is, today's discussion was related to prostate. So Adibin says, soaking, sprouting, or fermenting reduces phytic acids from seeds, legumes, and grains. Lots of how-to information online. I was a little late to lecture. Maybe you mentioned this already. No, I did not mention this, but thank you for mentioning it. So Alexander says that, did you see Kyle's interview? No. There are so many people with vaccine injury. So carnivore says, would fasting help apoptosis in prostate cells given zinc deficiency? Would fasting help apoptosis in prostate cells given zinc deficiency? Yes, so fasting does help with the apoptosis in general. Now, how much is that effect on prostate? I don't know. So, Kini, you were saying that there are si sirens. Where is this happening? Where or where are you? I hope you're safe. Oh, so these are tornado sirens. You are here in the US. So, uh, uh, maple art, yes. So, zinc and copper would interfere with each other so that that is why you kind of take them with different meals grain of sand says i take a whole food zinc and never early in the day always with food So, n n correct. So many of the metals have the same problem that they can be irritating for our stomach. So, Tamara says 80 or 18. So the study that I showed, that said 80, 8, 0. So if you see here, uh, ouch, what happened? I tried to enlarge the size of this one. Okay, so somewhere over here, here, 80 milligram per day. So that's this daily value. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration developed DVs to help consumers compare the nutrient content of food and dietary supplements within the context of a total diet. The daily value of zinc is 11 milligram for adults and children aged four years and older. So FDA is at 11. <laughs> These studies are at 80. This is a very interesting question. I do not have the answer for this one. How do you know? Uh, do you know why hair darkened with age? I was mid brown haired when I was a kid, but now it is dark brown. No idea because I was this 
at 23, 24, and I'm still this. They did not become dark. Doug says, I'm getting pixelation. Okay, so for anyone who's getting pixelation, FDA says 11 milligram per day, four years of age and above. These studies, which are from JAMA Ophthalmology, so it is actually from, from ophthalmology. Um, let me actually read the exact name. Okay, so I can't find it. But anyways, um, the study done by the ophthalmology organizations, they say 80, 80 milligram per day. But that is also for protection against macular degeneration. And also these supplements are usually for men above 40 years of age. Men below that do not have these issues because they are able to get correct amounts of zinc from their food. Okay, so but uh, talking about the that bicyclist who um, I did not know that he was on Campbell. Um, Dr. Paul Merrick called me before this talk, these talks, and he said, um, you are the you are the mechanism guy. I said, yes. So he said, I, I need something. I said, okay. Normally he would discuss the mechanism right there. And today he said, so I watched this interview with that bicyclist. And, I, and he said that he was saying that he had all kinds of allergies. So he said, what is the mechanism for that? We need to figure that out. So I'll be doing some more research on that and discussing that here and with Dr. Paul Merrick as well. This is a good question, Super Alien. I do not know the answer to. What's your opinion on dimethylglycine for DNA and RNA methylation? I will have to read up on this one. Yes, I think Kyle, yes. <laughs> El Quintrio, <laughs> the bicycle. So Jim says, probably taking 250 milligram pills of zinc daily for a 65-year-old man is good. Um, little sir. So meanwhile in America says, can steroids trigger MCAS like opioid and local anesthesia product scan? So for the uh, mast cell activation, we actually need them to be primed and then to be triggered. Steroids do not do that. Steroids would actually suppress their triggering. That is why for many MCASs or allergic reactions or mast cell activation, steroids are the ultimate hammer. But um, the, the discussion that I had with Dr. William Murphy, Dr. Bill Murphy, who is the who is PhD in immunology and a very, very uh, amazing professional and mechanism guy. His discussion with me was that possibly there are memory cells from vaccine that go to bone marrow, which we know I have actually discussed that study. When they go to the bone marrow, 
if they stay there and they are active there and they're releasing inflammatory markers or molecules, I always call them markers, molecules, then they would activate the surrounding cells, which were just there to sleep. This is like you go to a hotel and at, in the middle of the night, you start screaming at the top of your lungs. The hotel people would start waking up and start coming out and saying, what's going on? So other cells will become active and then they would start releasing their antibodies and that can cause all kinds of allergies by priming IgEs with various antibodies. That is a mechanism that we discussed. I would do some research for more. And he said one more thing that was uh, interesting and worrisome. And he said, there is actually no way of stopping these memory cells or cells that have gone to bone marrow other than suppressing the bone marrow to rebounce, you know, just like they say, windows, restart the windows, to restart the bone marrow system. But that would be a very drastic uh, solution. Susan says, was anyone at Twitch? I don't know. Today I relate to Twitch as well. <laughs> Meanwhile in America says it's a fascinating topic. Yes. So I'll do some research on this. Meanwhile, in America says, what extent do you believe positive thought and brain control can help us recover from long COVID? I think you said last resort. I think it is part of the overall therapy. Um, positive thought or I would say reduced stress. Negativity causes stress as well. Positivity reduces stress. So reduced stress is a very important factor for reducing or reducing the intensity of the continuous inflammation. Actually, physiologically, not it's, it's not just in our head. Physiologically, our inflammatory system or our stress hormones reduce, which allows the immune system to function better and correctly and in a more balanced way. This is why I believe mindfulness is a very important factor to help with long COVID. <laughs> Doug says you're going to fix our allergies. I am going to figure out the mechanisms. <laughs> I wish I could. <laughs> Meanwhile says, I believe in it is to correct. So correct. So Skyfrog, one third of the patients on, on uh, placebos can actually feel better. So I have a couple of questions and then Patizik, let me answer this uh, question if I can. Patizik says, what is the benefit of taking lutein for age-related macular degeneration? My ophthalmologist did not mention taking zinc. So let me put these links with you once more, which I think one, you should read them and second, probably... <laughs> share with the ophthalmologist as well if he doesn't become upset about it. Um, here. Lutein has its function as well and uh, zinc has its function as well. Okay, so um, one, I just see a Bob Jackson Praying for my education. Praying for my education. Thank you very much. 
uh, really appreciate it um, for the super chat. Now, I was going to ask a couple of questions. One was, I was talking with the journalists who are working with me to start writing the articles. The basic idea was, remember that book plan? <laughs> that project never gets out of my head. I want to create books. I want to create a university as well. So I had requested help. And so there are two journalists who are helping. They probably are listening right now as well, or maybe listening later on. They're helping with writing some of the articles that are going on Substack. So the first question is, to be able to support this work, in Substack, I am getting enough subscriptions that I can start paying the folks who are writing. I am writing as well. So one thought was, and this is somebody else who is running a Substack who does this. What they do is that only for paid members, they have them send in their articles. So let's say if you are a paid member, you send in your article through an email and then we publish the selected articles interesting one so if you have an opinion and, and you want to have that on dr bean's platform you can send it but that service could be for paid members only we all agreed we had this discussion today so first what do you think about this second we all agreed that um, so far during the pandemic we have tried not to put any of this content behind paywalls or hide it behind paywalls or say you need to pay to get it. So the Substack allows articles to be by payment only or for the paid members only. But we decided to keep, keep it free because it is important for us to access these knowledge bases. Is that a correct decision? Or do you think we should have some articles, for example, cliff notes of the videos only for the paid members and others not? Again, our decision was to just leave it open for everyone. So that is the second one. Third process, we still need to figure out how do we have this chat and have the guests here what should be that process of cool bean saying, okay, I want to be here and we create a list and then we schedule their time and then they join us. So thoughts on that. So these were my questions for you. So Casey says, start a university. That would be awesome. Yes. So my, um, plan that I usually declare it to everyone that either I'll make the university or I'll, I'll die while I was working to make the university. Meanwhile in America says happy to be a student of Bean University. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sky Frog said, don't forget antidote, antidote, antidote. <laughs> James says, super chat, let's go. So there was one more question, uh, one more comment. I think that you're aware that our weird auditors do not want me to put the COVID videos on our site. So, should I create a new site where the COVID videos can be put there? So, so far, these videos are just sitting outside on Odyssey, on YouTube, and these are at the mercy of these platforms. They can take them down like YouTube have has done 56. It is so funny <laughs> that YouTube took so many of the ivermectin videos out that sometimes people ask me, do you know that there is a thing called ivermectin? Have you heard of that? <laughs> when they become upset about 
uh, me talking about Paxlovid or something else. I said, do you know Ivermectin? So um, I was thinking that we create a new site, nothing to do with Dr. Bean, a different site. And over there, we put all of these COVID videos. The benefit is, number one, they will probably survive the the hacksaw that these platforms have. And secondly, maybe that site becomes the next site for medical education free discussions. And thirdly, over there, we can then package them to say all vaccine related videos are here. All therapeutics are here. All virus variants are here. The side effects are here. Long COVID is here. So we can package them into various courses. And the question is, if I do that, do you think I should put some fee on that per course, let's say $10 or something that allows people to get access by paying and that allows me to run that platform and be able to pay for it? All those questions asking. <laughs> So Carr says, could or should you keep the controversial videos in FLCCC site? So today FLCCC is also using Odyssey. I actually am going to work with them. If you see yours truly is, have you seen my role with FLCCC? So if I go to FLCCC, and you go to positions. You would see me here as head of medical education and clinical advisor. So I am actually going to try to figure out how do we create a section here or a sister site of FLCCC where the educational material can go. So working on it, but currently the educational material on FLCCC is referring to Odyssey. And I think that it we need to have uh, articles here, um, videos here. We need to have content from others as well, not just me. So um, that's the plan for FLCCC. Colombian Bean says, uh, long story short, videos and FLCCC are great. I, I think they came up with a great title, Long Story Short with Dr. Bean. And um, did you notice that I'm a little stiff in those because I'm recording? It's so funny that when I'm speaking with you all, with the Cool Beans, I am more relaxed. But when I am recording directly, just looking in the camera, I am less relaxed. I'm a little stiff. Lisbeth says, I would not be patronizing if I hadn't experienced free first. Agreed. And my hope was that this knowledge is very important for all of us, for myself, my family, my friends, and then my friends here. So it doesn't look right to put a paywall on it. Maybe after the pandemic, when this becomes more interesting from a archival point of view, historical point of view, journalistic point of view, or review point of view, then maybe we can make those courses with fee. But this was the point of view to keep it free. Till the people like YouTube brought their hacks on and started hacking this content. Kini says, when do you sleep, Dr. Bean? So after this talk, which would finish somewhere near 8, then I would have my dinner. Actually, I'll go out first for half an hour. I just have to step out. Um, I'll go out for half an hour. Then I'll come back and I'll have dinner. Then about an hour or hour and a half later, I would sleep. I wake up about 4.30 to 5 in the morning. And then um, morning rituals, shower, my prayers... After that, I go out for a walk. Then I go for my coffee. During that coffee, I call some of the folks, family members, friends. So these are my daily ritual calls. <laughs> uh, 
And then I come back and start the business meetings. So by 12 to 1, business meetings are done. And then I start preparing for the lecture for you all, the cool beans. And here we are. That's the cycle. It's for more than two years, that is the cycle. That's what has been happening. <laughs> Something is going on, Linda is... Hmm. Hiris says that you deserve to have millions of subscribers. I believe if you add your full bio to your YouTube site, you will get more followers. Will do. It is interesting. I, I also know how to get more followers. One of the way is if I became very openly either pro-vaccine or anti-vaccine or a harbinger of scare a reporter of fear. As soon as I think if I did that, I would become popular in that one group. I was talking with someone that, and this is medicine. What happens is, and I can, because I can see the stats on YouTube, I can see the dynamics. Every time I talk about, here is a vaccine. For example, I talked about Medicago a few days ago. And I saw so many people unsubscribe at that time because I was talking about vaccines. Similarly, if I talk about something that vaccine, for example, clotting or cardiac issues, a few days ago, I talked about cardiac issues. And all of a sudden I see a flood of people leaving because I'm creating hesitancy according to them. So throughout my two years, because I did not became, become squarely fear monger or one side or the other, I have always been only um, attracted to and attracted folks who have this balanced approach for their understanding as well, who are looking for what is the balancing approach here. If Geert is saying this, where is the possibility of right and wrong? And so we are that group. Secondly, we go deep in the uh, discussions, in the mechanisms. This is not everybody's cup of tea to go deeper in the mechanism. Many, many people, for example, today we talked zinc. Many people would simply say, just tell me that zinc, this, this amount is needed daily, to help with my prostate and I'm good. And fewer people would say, show me the mechanism itself. I want to think about it. And this is what uh, Paul, Dr. Paul Merrick today, when he called me, he said, I, I, when he was talking with me about the mechanism for allergies, he said, it is important that we look at mechanisms and you are the mechanism guy. And we both agreed that the right way of thinking in medicine is, I think it should be for every discipline. First, understand what are the normal mechanisms of medicine, so physiological mechanisms. Then understand what are the abnormal mechanism or, or pathologies. And then figure out what are the mechanisms of drugs or therapies or interventions that can take the abnormal towards normal. These three layers and enable a doctor or a clinician to think for how to manage their patients. But if we do not enable this thinking, then it's all just cramming or algorithm application and no possibility of thinking. So he was saying that because you're the mechanism guy, you can think about this and then we can think about the management of it. So so I have these, and I think that there is a third part as well, and that uh, people have been very vocal about it, and that is that my videos are long. Because I explain uh, the mechanisms more in detail, my videos are longer. So these three things together keep my audience in a more limited uh, group 
compared to a larger audience. But I am very happy with this audience as well because I say it to many doctors in your absence. I say to many doctors that take any cool bean, sit down with them and discuss the mechanism. And I can bet you that the areas of COVID or immunology, they would probably know more than you. <laughs> so I say that to my friend doctors that this is what we have cult cultivated here. This um, asset that is the knowledge base that has developed in all of you and understanding of the mechanism that allows you to think more and read more and understand more and become independent in acquiring knowledge and understanding medicine, that asset is not created by anyone, uh, any other presenters that I know of. Dr. Z is here. There was one more uh, uh, super chat, so thank you. <laughs> KC says, organizing would make it easier for people to find topics, but I think charging will be a deterrent to the layperson who is interested in self-education. Kini says, with long, thank you very much. <laughs> Skyfrog says maybe you can buy your platform for one billion. Yes. This is actually very true, Doctor Z. It's surreal that we are talking about forbidden education. I feel like I'm in communist communist country. It's not only the forbidden education. There is punishment. There is an actual punishment. And there is a sense of entitlement that people who are punishing, they think they can punish and they should punish. And so that's the weirdest thing. Petizik says, when is Dr. Z going to be a guest again? So I thought I, did I mention to Melissa to request Dr. Z again? So let me, um, please. Uh, all right. So Melissa would now bug Dr. Z. <laughs> Super Alien says, you cannot satisfy everyone anyways. Thank you. That's correct. Linda says, I have learned more in two years than I would have otherwise in my lifetime. Thank you. You're very welcome. And it is actually very funny. The immunology is usually weaker even for doctors. Because somehow doctors don't pay much, much attention to immunology. So your immunology, all of us here, is 10 times better than a doctor's understanding. Yes. So actually, Dr. Heather reached out and he said, I am having my own talks. Would you like to come over? I said, yeah, sure. So it might appear in his talk in a few days. Uh, Melissa is working out her time. Uh, I'm maybe representative of a cohort here. Okay to let go says no medical pro but able to learn from Dr. Bean's streams. Still I fell behind when the war started. I'm thinking tags might be helpful. Yes. So <clears throat> they're totally fine whenever you can make time. <laughs> this is true. It is hard to read a paper when the author lacks the knowledge we have learned. It is true that sometimes you can actually look at a study and say, what did they just do here? Kelly says, where are Dr. Heather's talks? I do not know. I'll have to ask Melissa. <laughs> She's working with him.
uh, Elquin says Dr. Sue's book, Cohort, and here's a WHO. <laughs> yes, here's a who. Yeah, so I had Dr. Uh, Heather, the first time he talked, he was on my show and a couple of times then. I do not know if the YouTube let that be up or not. I have not seen it. YouTube has been going after my content like crazy. YouTube chat says, yes, your videos are long, but I think it has to be that way. Dr. Heather videos are long too. Also, Dark Horse goes for almost four hours every Saturday. Wow, a lot of important information. That's correct. Carlos says, theoretically speaking, at the state we are in the pandemic, if you were immune naive in early 30s, would you take the vaccine now or wait for the next gen treatment? So... I would add one more thing. Knowing the vaccine's efficacy, I would have probably skipped. Because it seems like the drugs can do a better job than vaccine for younger age. And it seems like the risk is more. But that's just the data that I've seen so far. The comorbidities, the risk factors, the exposure kind of work, all of those things are additional factors. So a generalizable statement cannot be given. Meanwhile, in America says, I believe charging for a mentoring group or further discussion with clinic would be fine. Yes. Meanwhile, in America, says can't help but feel that there'll be quite a surge this fall. Let's see. The question is, is it going to be surge like common cold-like surge, other coronavirus-like surge, or is it going to start killing with higher numbers or intensity? John says, I think Dr. Heather was banned. Yes. So um, my observation of Dr. Heather was he actually started with very, very good discussions, but at some point he became a little intense. And uh, he had tweeted once that there were people complained about him and he had to lawyer up. But he then became intense as well. And there were some very intense messages from him. Eventually got banned. Okay to let go says, Dr. Heather became my dog because you had him as a guest and I gained faith in him. He's good. As a doctor, he's very good. Keeney says, uh, Dr. Bean, discussion on sleep disorders and Alzheimer's. That's an interesting one. Take note, Dr. Z. <laughs> Linda says, we need to invent an auditor repellent. Yes, we should actually just have our own private site. Skyfrog, so that is the idea that I want to do. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot do it with Dr. Bean because I have certain partnerships and folks who can then start auditing me. But we can set up a new system which is open to everyone. And that, but the only restriction is this is medical education or medical. So it becomes a vertical, of, let's say a rumble, but for medicine. That's the idea that I want to do. Super Alien says, I download most of the videos offline. Thank you. Tamara says, cool beans have fertile minds. Beans are cool weather crop. Frequent picking and successive planting extend the harvest and get us through the drought and drought and dearth surrounding us. Yes, absolutely. It was interesting for me to 
to take a chance of discussing medical mechanisms with non-medical folks. And if you actually think about my two years with you, my struggle has been how can I represent this in a way that it becomes clear like a daylight. And the idea that because some of you are non-medical, you cannot understand it. And I don't want, I didn't want to hide behind that in, by regurgitating a lots of jargon and then simply say, well, you're not medical, so you won't get it. I wanted to see, could I present it? And so my growth has been continuously, how do I present it in a way that that can become more, uh, you get the appropriate depth of medicine, but still, even being non-medical, you can get it. Many of the lectures that I've done, the depth of understanding the mechanisms is deeper than many graduation level medical discussions. So you actually know some of the mechanisms more than doctors. So that was my own journey to figure that out. <laughs> Skyfrog says, eyes and donuts help for us non-medical people. Yes, that those eyes have really helped. They have actually cut the both way. I got cancelled because I make eyes which are not worthy of doctors. <laughs> Saraswati says, have an open mind. Yes. So uh, John says, when is illustrious Paul Borg be on again? I think tomorrow. Tomorrow is Wednesday or Thursday? Tomorrow is Thursday. So Paul will be with us tomorrow. Elizabeth says, thank you. You've helped many people in support groups when they have needed to make decisions such as about vaccines. Absolutely. So maybe it would be like a general community medicine degree, not actually medically practicing, just general community knowledge of medicine with a cartoon art minor. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Eric Dog says, I'm not medical either, but this Dr. Bean bloke has taught me a lot. Good, you can join in life now. And Eric, thank you very much. You have bought me so many coffees in those days. So thank you. Everybody, we all participated in so many ways to keep going. <laughs> Meanwhile, in America says I'll be all in, even if there are exams and tests. Yes. <laughs> Texas says, non-classical monocytitis. Yes. Oh man, I am chomping at the bit to show you all the, the um, objections. Let me see. I cannot show you the document because the lawyers are still involved. But let me see if I can read some of them for you. These are worthy of laughing. I, where is the document? I do not know where it is. The, I had it somewhere over here, but, oh well, I'll find it and share it with you for these um, quite funny objections. 
Rima is saying, is Dr. Bean horse? <laughs> Hopefully not. How are you doing, Rima? How is your tinnitus? <laughs> your Ashley, thank you very much. Bart says, how to be, stop being tired and lazy forever? That is a very good question. It depends what is the reason. If it is psychological or is it um, actual pathological, nutritional, environment? There are many, many possibilities. But if it is just generally, your totally healthy environment is good, no psychological issues, it's just studies if you're a student, then um, studies tend to do that and you have to figure out how to engage in them. Rima says, bad. That's so sad. I'll call you. Casey says, early appointment with cardiologist, time to go to sleep. Good night. And it's almost time for us as well. Alquin makes the goat. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bay Arius Aquarius says, very shocked at what an amazing artist, a doctor and a teacher you are. Thank you very much. Good way. Good shock, right? Meeple Art says, base gut microbiome doesn't change much whatever we do unless transplant. So wondering what does yogurt, kefir do do good bugs sit there superficially to help us like a transient colony? Um, they try to re in, um, correct the balance if there is a problem with the balance. So there are certain foods or drugs or viruses that can actually cause disruption in the normal balance. So things like yogurt would actually bring in a bigger army of normal guys. And yes, one, there would be some normal extra guys sitting there and doing good job. And then they might overtake some of the colonies and increase their size, size of the colony. Rima says, Dr. Bean, are you ill today? Your voice sounds different. No, totally fine. Um, I have just not taken my antihistamines for a couple of days. <laughs> I wanted to see if my cough is gone. So you can see that the cough is gone. Dr. Z says, this is not a dress rehearsal. We only live once. Don't waste a day being lazy. As Dr. B said, that's it. That's if there are no medical reasons for the tired and lazy feeling. Yes. That is correct. Brain fog is a difficult thing. Rima says, Alhamdulillah, thank you. Re, uh, this could be. So Rima, this uh, microphone does this as well to the voice. So maybe there's a contribution from that. And this microphone needed reconfiguration and I have not done it. I would do that over this weekend. <laughs> Sky Frog says antihistamine. No, I'm sure you're making fun of me, Sky Frog. <laughs> antihistamine, <laughs> not antihistamine. <laughs> James Nguyen says mic sounds perfect. Thank you very much. It's a good, a good mic. So, Ashley, love that question. What is that question? Why did I miss the question? <laughs> okay, so here. Do you think people suffering from long COVID would benefit from getting something like a GI map test to see what's going on with their microbiome given the new research on how it impacts the gut? Yes. I think it is important to understand um, GI issues and the allergic issues in general, what's going on with mast cells. So yes.
So um, just to further explain, Rima used to take my Flonase in the morning and uh, one antihistamine every day. For a couple of days, I've not taken any. I was just thinking that I want to try if my <laughs> my cough is gone or not. My cough is gone. YouTube says, excellent sound since you upgraded from Yeti. Very clear. Thank you very much. And I think there is further equalization to make it even more clear. So we'll do over this weekend. <laughs> Ibrahim says, microphone sounds like a radio program. I love it. Thank you very much. Should I start telling you a story? <laughs> Rini, Rini says, thank you, Dr. Mean, you're a wonderful teacher. My son and his wife, who has a long haul COVID, was diagnosed with the flu. He has been very ill since Friday. I'm so sorry about that. Praying that he recovers fully and quickly. Please keep us up to date and please tell us if we can do something. Yes, <laughs> Doug said, tiny duck mouse. Yeah, so he's back, the duck mouse. I will be working over this weekend to reconfigure this mic's software so the duck mouse is not heard anymore. So I am taking Allegra. So um, Paul Borg says, I agree, this is a good cork for your videos. Okay, so I should keep it, the duck. <laughs> this is a good question. I do not know this. Can you overdose on fish oil? I would not think so, but overdose of anything can be an overdose. <laughs> Sita says, stories are always interesting. Yes, thank you. Skyfrog says, yeah. So Joe Rogan had this one or has. Yes, sucks, but no redos in what Dr. Z said. Spot on, yes. The bike guy said he felt better after fasting a few days, which is understandable. So I did that talk about fasting and intermittent fasting and how it can help. <laughs> Ren, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Overdose of water is drowning, correct. You can get very nauseous, yes. Robot voice story. So there is a robot voice here. Okay, so this is robot voice. All this is Dr. Mubin Say from drbean.com, and this is my robot voice. I think I should come up with a story with the robot voice. This is a very interesting question. Just curious, what were your favorite and least favorite specialities? So my favorite speciality was cardiovascular system and neurology. These two I really loved. Um, I totally did not like a genitourinary system. Renal system and uh, urinary system, although very important, but I just was not um, able to handle that. And I was 100% scared of pediatrics. It was very difficult even during my residency for me to go and attend pediatrics. And every time I'll attend pedi pediatrics and I'll see children in trouble, although the good news is children have very resilient bodies, better than ours, so they recover much better than us. But every time I'll go there and I'll come back and I'll say to my wife that why do children not come with an owner's manual and a guarantee that till this age, nothing will happen to them. So that's how it was for me.
So the voice is this this is megaphone. Hello. <laughs> this is robot. Can you hear is it, is it actually robotic? It at least says it's changed. This is hard tune. I have no idea what that is. This is some other effect. Or do I have to press effect and then the robot voice? This is the robot voice. Megaphone. Robot voice. Hard tune. Okay, so is this megaphone? Is this the robot voice? <laughs> so here is the robot voice. I think you have to press the robot voice and the effect button to turn it on. Meeple Art says you needed that extra button. Yeah, so there is a... So you turn on what you want. For example, here I want the robot. But it does not turn on till I press the second button. Now I am a robot. All this is not moving, see it. This is robot moving, see it. So hopefully it is gone now. <laughs> I have the bleep as well. <laughs> Paul Burke says, nice to have so, so many toys with the new microphone. Yes. Actually, um, microphone needed not this toy, but it is good to combine them for completion's sake. <laughs> Skyfrog says, I know a lot of robots and they don't talk like that. Yes. <laughs> Rima says, Dr. Bean is having fun. Correct. <laughs> Jim says that makes you an ultra make American great make America great again. Yes. John Snyder says robot was funny. So let's put that on. Robot. All right. John Snyder says the robot was funny. Here I am. <laughs> so, I'm gonna bleep now. I remember <laughs> Iver Iver Mc <laughs> Today's video is going to be favorite for YouTube for bleeping Ivy. <laughs> this is a good one. MGW says we should do a party night where we all have drinks during the chat and get loose. We should do a Zoom as well. Uh, Drew Man says, how is Luffy? I just heard Luffy. Normally at this time he's out. So I think he came back, made some sounds and he must have gone out. Lita says, a new toy, have fun voices. Thank you. <laughs> yes, today's, I'm going to say this. Today's video was brought to you by our... <laughs> Skyfrog says, do a whole show like that. Like this, a whole show. All of it. <laughs> <laughs> I do not know how does robot laugh. <laughs> All right. So let's break for today. Thank you very much. James Crooks has a super sticker as well. Thank you. Meeple Art says, would Luffy come to the party? So every day I ask my wife that, hey, can you catch Luffy while I'm teaching so we can get him in? But I think uh, it doesn't happen. So someday I'll have to put ourselves on and go and find him and then bring him in. MGW, correct. Yes, effect first and then the button. Got it. So thank you very much. Have a nice day. Like, subscribe and share. And there are links in the description if you would like to buy Dr. Bean Plan or if you would like to support this work. Thank you. And I'll see you tomorrow with Paul. Bye-bye.